Welcome back to Talk Story with House Majority. Building off our wonderful conversation with Paula Akana at Iolani Palace, I have here today with me Chair Cedric Gates of the House Committee on Art, Culture and Arts and International Affairs. Because we're here at the Capitol, we can both take off our mask if you feel comfortable <laughs> yeah. doing that. Both of us are vaccinated. Um, and the Capitol is just reopening to the public. Yeah. Um, so Chair Gates, thank you so much for joining me in person. I wanted to ask you, what are your priorities uh, for your committee as we come out of COVID? Yeah, thank you for having me as well, Majority Leader. Uh, right now, one of the things that we're trying to do with our committee is really try to connect our state and our, our islands to the rest of the Pacific. And how we are doing that is having these discussions with uh, our peers across all of all these different islands across the Pacific. But um, the conversations have been really great. We also have the Creative Resurgence mm -hmm. uh, Committee Task Force that we enacted last year to come up with ideas. And these were some of the ideas that we had as well. Now tell me about the initiative with Hawaiian language, because that was something that you've been working on for a while in culture and arts. And you know, coming out of seeing that great segment on Iolani Palace and how we're really kind of looking back at history and remembering what, what's going on with Hawaiian language um, initiatives. Yeah, so cool story about this bill. Um, it was, it came about after having a conversation with Chief Justice Reckonwall. And he said he just came back from New Zealand and he visited, visited their courts. And he said that at their courts, they would read, they would have it in writing, the Maori language, as well as um, audio. So when they would be calling out for defendants or whatever the case was, they would actually have both uh, the normal English as well as uh, uh, Maori, Maori language as well. So, so you're uh, looking to integrate Hawaiian language in all the state state um, communications and, and things like that? Correct. And so from that conversation, uh, we said, let's try to do it across the board, because if our judiciary system can do it, why can't the rest of our government? Yeah. And so I thought that also pay homage to our host culture our Hawaiian community as well. So that was something that I'm glad to see has been moving through the legislature and it's now on the Senate side, yeah. um, waiting for a hearing as well. Did you have some news about what the Department of Transportation might be doing soon too? Yes, you can so, share that. Yeah, so uh, DOT just released a press release that included that they will be changing all of the names of the street signs as well as freeway signs to reflect the correct spelling of these names of our street signs like Y and I uh, with the Okina um, after the I and Y and I. Um, so that's exciting. A lot of my constituents uh, who largely are Native Hawaiian are very excited about it. We have uh, received a lot of praise to hear about that. And that came also through DOT taking the initiative themselves because we also introduced bills to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, we weren't able to successfully pass it, but they took it on their own. So sometimes it's not necessary to pass laws. We yep. can all we can actually encourage uh, exactly. agencies to do that. I love that. I love that tactic. So Chair Gates, you talked about creative workforce. Can you share with me some of the things that you're starting to have conversations about? Yes. So one of the great organizations that I've been blessed to work with is the Hawaii Art Alliance. Uh, the director is Terry Skillman, and she's been very. Uh, very influence, influential on how we are running this committee because they are really on the ground doing the work with the artists, with our community, and they see the needs. And one of the needs is how do we support them to be sustainable in this type of environment with the cost of living being so high, with you know art supplies being expensive, and just also trying to get them prepared to be able to uh, benefit off of the programs that we have such as the pool program and mm -hmm. so forth that a lot of artists weren't able to capitalize on because they just didn't have all the paperwork and so forth so that's something that we want to see uh, us strengthen by creating a streamlined process to be able for artists to be able to get all their paperwork in order as well as to benefit off of any type of employment that can be created through the creative industry. I really appreciate you taking up this work because the last time we talked, I mean, we knew how devastated the uh, arts community was during COVID because of the shutdowns. Mm -hmm. And I will say this past weekend and this coming weekend with COVID restrictions dropping across the state, 
Um, people are going back to in-person performances. There's going to be a ballet performance here. There's going to be concerts coming up, Broadway in Hawaii. So all of these things are part of that kind of um, workforce development, strengthening of that industry. We have to promote all of those things to make sure that they can continue to perform in person, right? Yes. And, you know, we understand that the creative industry also contributes to our economy greatly. Um, there's many reports that indicate they are a big, uh, a decent percentage of the GDP in our in our state. So mm -hmm. respecting that and also knowing that we all love art, right? Who doesn't love a good music? Who doesn't love, you know, a nice hula show? It's all those kind of things that also keep us and, and keep Hawaii the culture it is. So I, I'm very supportive of that. I'm looking forward to working with the creative industry as we move forward. Yeah, I think I think the work is so important. And, you know, as we, we're going to look later on at what, what um, Hi Sam is doing, but all of these creative communities, they did such amazing things during COVID that they can hopefully continue as well. The outreach they, that they did digitally, Honolulu Theater for Youth did mm -hmm. some amazing programs. I mean, we just saw it everywhere, right? Was yeah. there something that you liked in particular that yeah. you saw? Yeah, I think, you know, the triennial um, is happening this year. And so it's a big event, over 60 artists participating in this event. Um, it's within, I think, seven locations. Mm -hmm. And so it's really a way to bring all of this together and showcase to the world um, because it's international that we have a lot to offer in, when it comes into the creative and culture and art. Yeah, it's a collaboration, right, of a, a number of, of museums. And we're going to learn a little bit more about that when we talk with um, JJ at High Sam. But I want to leave you with one last comment and maybe sharing information, art at the Capitol. So we have all these great pieces of art on our walls. Uh, we, we had art at the Capitol for several years um, before COVID, and it, went, it had to go online for the last two years. But is there some exciting news about art at the Capitol? Yes, very exciting. Exciting news! So this year, Art at the Capitol will be in person Yay. here at the Capitol, and I think that the community is going to love the different arts that are in all of our offices, and a lot of us have local artists as well. So it's really nice to see a, a plethora of different artists inside of our Capitol, as well as all the people contributing to it. So give me the date for Art at the Capitol. So it's April first. So April first. Please 1st. mark your calendars. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm.